We're here with Andrew Hunter, and this is going to look familiar to a lot of you. Uh, on Instagram, I posted this one time, and it kind of blew up. It is Andrew's take on a three-way miter joint. And to say it's an impressive feat of uh, craftsmanship is, is not going to quite do it justice, but... I, where did this come from? Yeah, I, I, I didn't discover it. I didn't invent it. Uh, it's a Chinese joint um, out, of, you know, out, out of the Ming Dynasty, which is uh, you know, 1300s to 1500s. So it's, it's, it's an old invention. Uh, it's pretty marvelous. You know, it, it's, it's a way to join three pieces, which a lot of furniture uh, demands, uh, and doing it Elegantly, you know, with with the miters in the corner and without running past, you know, with, without uh, without coping anything like that. Um, it's simple looking on the outside, obviously complex on the inside. Um, I mean, but it's the strength. It's so strong mechanically. Yeah, yeah. So much uh, surface area is bearing on other surface area. You know, it's it's a lot of little surfaces, but once you get them all working against each other, um, it is truly really a strong joint. Uh, especially when you add it to other joints um, counteracting this in, in a piece of furniture. Yeah, if you had these on all <clears throat> corners of a piece, A, yeah. that would kind of be hard to deal yeah. with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I imagine yeah. the final assembly of a piece where is, is a little complicated. A little complicated. Uh, I did a piece in, in armoire uh, with this joint, 16 corners, uh, well, eight, eight, eight corners in, in two pieces. Um, and the key is, uh, is to get the layout from the, from the very beginning and uh, don't go past the lines because you can't fine tune it after the fact because the second you fine tune one of the joints, you start, the one on the yeah, you start affecting top. all of them. Uh, so really starting out with good layout, which is <laughs> probably the hardest part of the joint is, uh, is getting it, it laid out. After that, it, it really is just woodworking. You know, I, I used routers, uh, drill press. Um, a lot of hand tools to get the uh, sort of in, inside of things, but uh, it's it's just woodworking. I mean, it's uh, once once you get your head around it, um, it's it's doable for sure. So um, I mean, you had <clears throat> mentioned this is nothing new. You've got examples of a piece yeah. here, um, and let's give credit where credit's due. This is Classical Chinese Furniture by Marcus Flax, and a beautiful book. Yeah, this is a, a modern book. Um, and this is, here's, a, here's an example. Um, this is a, you know, a, a bookcase. Um, that top corner would have used it. Um, simple, simple bookcase, but yeah. it, it, it speaks to Chinese furniture and the design aesthetic and everything. Yeah, that, yeah. That, especially traditional... Um, um, you know, Ming, Ming style, it, it doesn't, uh, it's very simple, clean lines, and, and the three-way miter really, uh, really helps for that. Uh, okay. So this is, this was our first, this was our intro to Chinese joinery. Sure. Yep. Um, moving on to the next one, we've got this guy right here, and this would be used, let's find the example where this would be used. Uh, his table for like a table um, apron like this. They they call that the the standard table. It was actually on a, a back cover of Fine Woodworking a few years ago by John Cameron, uh, restoring one of these. Okay. Um, but this form um, pre certainly predates that one. You know, this is uh, this is from from as early as 1100, uh, 1200, um, and it's it's taken from architectural. You know, a post and bracket construction. Um, so this is this is a model of a of a leg of a table such as this they they call the standard table. Mm -hmm. um, one well, of the nice I, yeah. without, I mean I can't t really tell what's what right here. So uh, again, you got the, you got the miters. Uh, they they always always have the miters, uh, but this this would be the, on the back? it's not mitered on the back. Nope. Okay. Yeah. Often oftentimes they're <laughs> right. they're just showing the miter and uh, taking the uh, the butt joint in the back. Okay. So this is the tabletop. Um, and generally, tabletops um, in traditional Chinese furniture were frame and panel. Uh, okay. Instead of being a solid top. All right. Uh, that, yeah. that is too. Uh, and the benefit of that means that you can plug your leg into the um, frame. Um, get that apart. Oh, so you don't have to have any slop for the table yeah, with to it, expand with and it, contract. With a solid top, uh, you, you have that issue and you can't plug legs into it. But with a frame and panel, um, you're able to, which 
which is just another strength to the leg. You know, it, it's a pivot point that can't move. Okay. Um, so that's, that, that begins, begins the strength, um, and this is what finishes it off. This is how this goes together. Three, three pieces. Um, two brackets on the side um, go together, you know. Um, and I, I should say that uh, this was all square when, when I did the joinery. You know, uh, most uh, you know, traditional Chinese furniture, they, they don't use lathes, uh, didn't use lathes. Um, this would be square and then the shaping would happen after the fact, which makes the joinery a lot easier. You know, it's, okay. uh, so I can, I can cut this groove while this is still square. Uh, and then do you've the got plenty of surface to do the layout and everything like yeah, that. Okay. Yeah. And I, I use hand planes uh, to, to, to round it. Um, so the two side brackets go in. Um, and this top uh, apron, you know, on, on the table would come down and slide between the two. And actually, the more weight on the table, um, the stronger the joint gets. Because it just pulls everything into itself. Yep. And, uh, and it pulls those two miters together as, it, as it's weighted. Another another thing about this table is the the legs are tapered out uh, in in two directions, which again adds to stability. Um, so really, not only beautiful but um, engineered well. You know, yeah. that's the, there's two things going on to make a uh, make a table last 500 years. Um, yeah, <laughs> or, because or in 500 this case, years, uh, 900 years. You yeah, know, that this is uh, these these are old old forms. But I can imagine a, a table with four of these, everything pulling into itself is yeah. just going to be rock solid no yep. matter what. Yep. Um, incredible. So there's more. Yep. We've got more, <laughs> more, more, more. This one's pretty dazzling. Um, this, I mean, this looks fairly familiar. So. Absolutely. You know, a Queen Anne um, yeah. uh, apron and leg. Um, a lot of times it's coming in square. Uh, and there's a lot of coping and shaping. Okay, uh, yeah. So again, uh, Chinese traditional furniture is using the miter. Or miter. Um, and the strength is, is, uh, is key in this. Again, they have tenons that would plug into a top, a mm -hmm. frame and panel top, which is adding, adding rigidity. This one's given a little bit right off the bat. You can see some, some dovetails. Something's here. going on. Yeah, yeah. something. Um, so here, here's an example. Um, it's a high-waisted... Um, table. So this this is this apron and waist is all one piece as as this is. Again, there's the panel. And and then and then the and then it plugs into the top. Yeah. So this goes together. Like that. <laughs> wow. Um, so a tapered sliding dovetail. That's the, uh, you know, that's the meat of the joint. Um, but then there's also, you know, a lap and a, and a there's just surface area is, is, is the key to, yeah. a, to a joint like this. Um, and most of these joints traditionally were not glued. So, um, you know, you add glue to all these surfaces and, and forget about it. But, yeah. uh, but the nice thing about um, not using glue is, is reversibility, you know, and repairability. Um, a 500 year old piece of furniture uh, is going to need repairing yeah, um, for, for it to last. So I, I think that's that's one of the things I, I really appreciate about uh, joinery like this is it's both strong and reversible. Uh, so it's, yeah. you don't these aren't just standalone things for your own amusement. No, I mean they're 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 fun. Uh, they're fun, fun. <laughs> but uh, absolutely, these are these are furniture joints uh, that to you be, use. Yes. Um, when having, you use them, do you glue? Um, I all spot glue with high glue sometimes. Okay. Um, it, it really depends on the application. If, uh, if it can get away with it, no. I feel like the more reversible, the better, um, the better chance someone will take a hammer to it and take it apart. Um, but if I am going to glue, I'll use high glue and, uh, and not goop it up too much. You know, okay. definitely make it reversible. Um, this piece, I actually, a, a table with this joint, I, I have not made. Um, but I, I'll show you what, what got me started. Um, it was, well, really this book. Um, so when, when I first started woodworking, I was opening any book, you know. Um, uh, I'm Chinese domestic furniture. I'm a Gustav Eck. Um, okay. So he's a, a German guy who was living in, in China in the 40s. This is, uh, you know, pre-revolution. Pre um, so 
you know, this is when the pieces were still intact. Um, so it was, we were really lucky that, that this book was made. And not only did he document um, pieces, um, many, many, um, he also did uh, full scale, you know, full drawings. Uh, in depth of, drawings. In, in, in depth, yeah. you know. So it was from this book um, that I decided to build my favorite form, uh, which is a, a tapered uh, cabinet. Um, again, the, the legs taper in. They, they do that a lot in their forms for stability mm -hmm. and, and also visually. I, I think it, it, it uh, adds. Um, but again, there were, there were detailed drawings on, on the joinery. Um, you know, the proportions I, I came up with with my own. Um, so here's, you know, really the, the, the meat of, of um, you know, this, this panel really shows what, what's going on in Chinese furniture. This is, you know, whether it's a tabletop, like, like we said, or frame and panel, um, this would be constructed very similar to this, mitered corners um, and battens using a, a really thin panel. This is only a three-eighth of an inch panel. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, hang on one second. So we've got one big panel on the front, and then when you flip it over, there's something going on. Right. We've got these battens on the back, you know, yep. so this is not three panels on the back. Right. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So this is uh, all one solid panel, um, and it's held with sliding dovetailed uh, battens. Uh, I'll, I'll open it up and show you. Okay. That's keeping the panel flat. Um, you know, again, in, in the corners, miters, it allows me to shape these two pieces. They, mm -hmm. they, they meet, uh, you know, seamlessly. Um, so the problem with a miter joint in such a small frame, and this is, this is what I was starting to see when I was building uh, uh, the cabinet, is that they were using really slender mem uh, members with yeah. small joinery. Uh, and these are pieces that are lasting 500 years that aren't glued. I, you know, it was a mystery to me, and that's... Certainly part of the reason I, I, I wanted to build it, uh, to sort of discover some of those mysteries. Uh, but let me, let me take this apart and, and show you some of the, the secrets behind uh, on the inside. So this is, you know, put together um, tight, but not, uh, certainly not overly tight. Um, okay, so. This looks kind of familiar. You've yeah. got your miter in front, mortise yep. and tenon butt joining in the back. Right, so they're, um, they wanted up front, maybe lay that down, up front they wanted the, uh, the beauty uh, and sort of sophistication of the miter. But the problem with a miter on, a, on two pieces this small is you're taking away so much of the meat yeah. that when you go to put a mortise through it, you're only left with a half an inch of mortise and uh, not strong enough. So there's a lot more strength in a full butt joint mortise which is what they gave it on gotcha, the back okay. on, on two thirds of it is a, is a butt joint mortise. Um, and then a lap of a, of a uh, miter for, for the show and mm. as well as more surface area. Um, so that's an impressive feat of joint. Yeah, right that's, there. that's a really nice, really nice joint. A lot of surface area. Again, if you're going to glue uh, a lot of surface area and if, if not e even still, there's uh, plenty of bearing surface. Two sides off, so that's that's the frame, um, which we talked about, and then the battens. So these are tapered sliding dovetails. Let me get the taper right and take one out. <laughs> There's one way to take them out. So the battens are actually tapered into. Um, here it is. There's a lot going on. A here. lot going on. So so the the tapered cabinet I was building. Uh, all four sides, all three sides were constructed like this, as well as the doors. Um, so I got pretty familiar uh, with making this joint, and it actually, uh, I, I can, uh, I'll, you know, for, for another time I, I can show you, it, it really isn't uh, that hard to do. Um, good layout and uh, woodworking, you know. So this, uh, this is a tapered slot um, with a tapered dovetail, um, and again, just an eighth of an inch dovetail. Um, but because it's tapered, it just, it tightens up as it goes um, in from this end. So that, you know, when I first made the joint, this piece was much longer 
and I, I adjusted the taper until it fit and then cut it to length. So there's, okay. there's a lot and of slop. The, okay. Yeah, there, there's a lot of slop to it that you can, uh, that you can adjust. Um, so the two things it's doing is it's keeping this panel perfectly flat, uh, yeah. which is really important. Um, and it's also allowing for seasonal movement because this is not joined. It's, it, it's, uh, it's just holding, holding it mechanically. Um, so the, the piece is constructed like this, um, you know, and I'm, I'm most of the way through it. You know, I, I've done all this joinery and I'm, I'm, I can't imagine how this works unglued for 500 years. You know, these are relatively very small joints. Um, and, and I'm, I, you know, I see these uh, pieces in museums and they're, they're still looking good. It's a pretty uh, sizable leap of faith. Yeah, to well, go through all this work. I, I, I uh, you know, I more I, I figured it would be good enough, and uh, you know, most you know maybe it was fragile or, uh, yeah. but I, I got to a point where I realized that it was the most rock solid thing I had ever built, um, and I just with these little teeny tiny yeah, tenons. Yeah. So so what I what I discovered was happening um, is it all had to do with this um, with the battens. Um, so putting this back together, let me make sure I, I get it together right. There are pieces. What's happening? So main, mainly the problem with uh, you know case pieces or say a door is over time that the weight of the door is is going to put um, force on that frame and panel and it's going to sag or mm -hmm. it's going to it's going to change its diagonal. Uh, it's going to rack. Um, in a little rack in a piece of furniture over a hundred years turns into a bigger rack and eventually destroys the joinery and that's what destroys a piece of furniture really um, is a little wiggle turns into a big wiggle and then um, so what I was finding was this had no wiggle um, and what I what I figured out is that it's it is let me it is the construction of the, the tapered sliding dovetail. Um, so the panel itself cannot change diagonals. It, it can't rack, yeah. you know, j just like a um, piece of plywood. Uh, you, you, it won't sag over time. Uh, so the, the panel has that property, but it's typically, you know, generally in, in the West, it's floating inside a frame. So you put, uh, you put pressure on the corner of that frame and it uh, puts pressure on the corner joints and you can rack it. Mm -hmm. um, I was getting no racking uh, with with the door, with these small joints. You know, this is not not necessarily uh, the tightest joinery. You know, most of this I'm just able to push in with my hands. Um, but what's happening is I'm taking the properties of the panel, which is something that can't uh, change its diagonals, can't rack, and I'm attaching the battens to it with a sliding dovetail. So it's almost like the frame is floating around the panel. And then these battens are now attaching to the frame. So I'm yeah. giving the property of the panel to the frame. Um, so this, this panel can't change um, diagonal, meaning these two battens cannot rack. Yeah, uh, they cannot can't rack. move they, they can't rack. diagonally. And now attaching these panels to the frame means that the whole frame can't rack. And when you put it together, it's, um, it's, it's fantastic. It's impossible for it to go anywhere. It is. It's, uh, it's as... As, as strong as traditional frame and panel joinery can get, really. Um, and while still having that delicate mitered frame yes, around the front. You know, I mean, this is, there's nothing, uh, there's nothing overly, let me get it right. You know, it's elegant. It's a it's a very thin frame. You know, just just over an inch. Yeah. Um, but literally, I can stand a you know I can stand on that corner and I can't change. I can't rack this yeah. this uh, rectangle. Um, and that that means this door will never sag. That means that cabinet will never have that shimmy which puts pressure on these outside corners. You know, this by applying pressure here, it essentially spreads the force out. Um, through the battens into the panel and, and keeps it out of these small delicate corner joints, which means you don't need glue. You can use uh, you know more delicate joinery, uh, you know more elegant uh, proportions, and still have a rock solid piece that lasts 500 years. Absolutely um, insane. Yeah. So it's you know this is 
a discovery for me, and, and I'm just uh, amazed that that I haven't been hit over the head with this before by somebody. You know, yeah. it's it's, uh, it, it's there's a lot to learn uh, from there's, this. There's tradition. a lot of lessons to learn yeah. from. Yeah. <laughs> And, and really, yeah, and, and really, it starts with with opening a book. You yeah. Know? And uh, and fortunately, there, you know, we we have uh, more connection to China now, and there there are better books being written. But uh, certainly, Gustav Eck's book uh, in the '40s was a was a great start to uh, us us learning. Well, I'm yeah. really glad you discovered it. Yeah. Cool. Um, well, I'm I'm glad they discovered it. Thanks for showing us. You're welcome. Yeah.